So some of y'all are thinking, now that we know all this about lines, what are we going to use them for? One such practical application, other than the word problems in those sections, is systems of equations. These are two different things happening at the same time. This is thing one and this is thing two, and that's the relationship between the intergoings of thing one and thing two. Yeah. Um, well, why don't I label it thing one and thing two? Oh man. Should I go through a Dr. Seuss thing? Um, if this is thing one and that thing two, what we want to do is maybe we want to graph these guys. Why? Because we're looking for a solution to a system. A solution to a system is a point, and that's in the next set. What I want to do is I want to graph these two. What are you looking at? You're looking at these guys being, um, oh, nasty. On this top one, graphing equation one, I'm looking at that thing, I'm looking at that thing, and it seems to lend itself to using um, x and y intercepts. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. When I'm graphing thing one, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Graphing thing one, if I let x be zero, then y is gonna be two. You see how I did that? It's in a nice form where the variables are, <clears throat> where the constant is a multiple of the two variables. So if I let x be zero, then y is two. When x is zero, y is two. I'm gonna put a nice blue dot there. Sure. I'm graphing thing one. Now if I let y be zero, apparently x is four. If I let y be zero, x is four? Sure. And if I connect those dots, la 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 la, ha ha, get you that nice line. I'll call it L1. For thing one, we see x and y intercepts don't necessarily turn out to real nice numbers when we're dealing with this uh, second equation. So maybe you want to put the second one into y equals mx plus p. Could you totally use x and y intercepts? Absolutely. You could let x be 0 and y is minus 3. You could let y be 0 and then x is 3 halves. Ooh. I have no problems with those two points. Oh, but why not? Let's just get a little exercise. Let's look at thing 2. Thing 2. we intend to put it in y equals mx plus b. So then 2x minus y is 3. I want to solve for y, right? Sure. So I'm going to add y to both sides. 2x is 3 plus y. Now I want to subtract a 3 off each side. 2x minus 3. Now I want to get it in familiar form. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put my y on this side and my x's and constants on the other using my uh, reflective property 2x minus 3 and now I have it in y equals mx plus b and this is thing 2 thing 2 sure let's graph it tells you where to start tells you where to go oh sure so where do I start? I start at minus three. One, two, three on the y. I put it up there. And then I go up two over one. So I go up one, two, right, one. Fun. And then I connect the dots. La 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 la. Connect the dots. Ha <laughs> ha. And it appears that my system has a solution right around that point. A solution is where the two lines are going to cross. Awesome. This would be finding the solution to a system by way of graphing. Huh. It involves graphing. We're going to be talking about two other ways in just a moment. But if you were going to guess that point, what would you guess at x be? I'm guessing two. What would you guess at y be? I'm guessing one. And then what? Yeah. A box and a flower. 
But if you don't believe me, check it! Go on, throw it back up in there. See if it satisfies both of them at the same time.